This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief but choosing the right chapter is crucial in a free consultation we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control the chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life please contact me today at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com 99.9 k i s w the rock of seattle we got our loud and local band of the week it's king youngblood anyway. Thing. It's our loud local band of the week, King Lugbud. <laughs> that would be King Young Blood. <laughs> say, King Young Blood. <laughs> say that three times fast, Steve, or, or at least say where we get their music. Oh, uh, dude, they have a new record that I highly recommend everyone checking out. I think this is going to be the next band that's going to break out and get a lot of attention in the Seattle area. They're phenomenal, and their new album's called Big Bang. Not a bad song on it. I, I know I have those records, you just don't skip any of the songs. This is definitely one of them. Playing tonight, you can check them out at the Central Saloon. If you can't make it tonight, you can see them June 16th over at the High Dive. And BJ will love this band because not only are they putting out great music, but they're also doing some good stuff for those that battle with mental, mental illness. All of them have had experiences with it in their lives, so they put together the Hold Your Crown project, which helps break the stigma for young people in mental illness. Love that, man. And if you want more info, just go to the BJ and Minx page of KISW.com. And don't forget, Sunday nights at 8 o'clock, it's Loud and Local. Great show with two hours of all Pacific Northwest music. Bands like King Youngblood. Friday, everyone. We finally made it. I don't know Woo! about you guys, but this week was really, really long. Yes. Was it? Uh, for me, yeah. Yesterday, I was just like, oh, I don't got to do anything tomorrow because I thought it was Friday. And then I was, oh. uh, yeah, unfortunately oh. found out it was Thursday when my wife yelled at me because she's just like, why are you getting my hopes up? Oh, wow. Look yeah. at you. Well, I mean, yeah. I support your wife yelling at you. I think that should happen on the road. Rude. Rig. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you guys have some fun out there. And uh, I don't know, go do something. Like right. ma- maybe go oh, on that road okay. trip or yeah, not. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We got Hop Singh in Tacoma. Hop Singh, are you there? Uh, no, oh. actually. It looks like we have Scott. It looks like Hop Singh oh. is gone. Oh, Scott, are you there? I am here. Nice. All right, Steve. Get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> For those playing at home, Scott will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Scott, you can pass all you want, but you'll only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Ready. 
What type of fruit is depicted on the top of the men's singles trophy at Wimbledon? Oh, pass. What was Val Kilmer's call sign in Top Gun? Iceman. Uh, the first one was Strawberry. No. And yes to Iceman. What country does Cafe <laughs> Olay originate from? Cafe Olay. Uh, yes. How many seasons did Russell Wilson play for the Seahawks? Ooh. Uh, nine? No. Eight? No. Seven? No. Er. What units are ship speeds measured in? Uh, not. Yes. Poutine consists of gravy and cheese curds on top of what? French fries. Yes. From 97 to 2002, what computer company used the ad slogan, Think Different? Uh, Apple. Yes. How many checkers does each player start a game with? Uh, 11? No. 13? No. 12? Yes. According to the song, on what hill did Fats Domino find his thrill? Blue yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correct. Not too shabby. I mean, we'll see. That's a yeah. solid one. I think there's a couple that, unless Steve gets yeah. like that masterful guessing that yeah, he does right. sometimes. Uh, hopefully that Russell Wilson one isn't going to be the difference maker. Oh, it could be, though. Probably yeah, will. it might be. That yeah. is a good point on that one. Yeah. But Steve, he's back. I am. Look at him. And look just, at me. <laughs> look at him. Just look at me. Well, unless you uh, can't see him, then listen to him. Don't you? Do I don't know if I oh. don't go that far. Oh, okay. Fine then. Uh, Steve, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> oh, yes. What type of fruit is depicted on the top of the men's singles trophy at Wimbledon? Apple? No. Uh, banana. No. <laughs> <laughs> An eggplant. No. Yes. What was Val Kilmer's call sign in Top Gun? Goose. No. Maverick. No. Uh, whoa. Oh. That's all I got. Oh. Um, uh, uh, Spocky. No. Spocker. What country does Cafe Olay originate from? Uh, Cafe Olay. Uh, Spain. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Ole, Italy. No, Ole, France. Yes. How many seasons did Russell Wilson play for the Seahawks? Who's this guy you're talking about? Uh, uh, um, Ten. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what units are ship speeds measured in? Knots. Yes. Poutine consists of gravy and cheese curds on top of what? French fries. Yes. From 97 to 2002, what computer company used the ad slogan, Think Different? Apple. Yes. How many checkers does each player start a game with? Twelve. Yes. According to the song, on what hill does Fats Domino find his thrill? Blueberry. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a tie. Oh, nice work, Ooh. Scott. Ooh, you started yeah. Started off yeah, real slum, like mm-hmm. s- 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 crummy. Yeah. yeah. Or slummy. <laughs> Slow <laughs> and crummy. <laughs> You're <Yeah>. slummy. <laughs> You're all slummy there. You're a slummy guy. I thought the Iceman was going to be the difference maker because it was Iceman. Damn, dude. What was that? Is that what he does? Like he like oh. clenched, like he bites down on his teeth? Oh, I don't remember. That's, that's Val Kilmer's character. I yeah. don't know it either. I just remember that, people that, telling well, that's him that. That's what Val Kilmer is, is Iceman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, so, yeah. okay then yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, I guess I need to go back and watch Top Gun. It's on Netflix. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, then I can watch it's also that. On Paramount Plus, too. Ooh, yeah, because I was scrolling, trying to find something, and I saw Top Gun. I was like, "Ooh, the movie!" No, the other movie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the new one, which yeah. is out in theaters today. Or maybe, yes. you know, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I think maybe it is just only on Netflix. But either way, I know it's free. Yeah. Uh, if, well, for me anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, for your mo- it's free if you have free a monthly, monthly subscription. subscription. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, does anybody happen to know, and this is going to be a tough one unless you're a tennis fan, the type of fruit that's depicted on the top of the men's single trophy at Wimbledon? I would just guess grapes. Because <laughs> grapes are celebratory, you know? I, okay. I, I mean, I don't know if I can Ken Jennings my way to this. No, I don't think so. I just, I, no, the Steve's answers, I'm just imagining two grapes and an eggplant. Now, yeah. like, that would oh, be amazing. amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, no, it's a pineapple. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah, exactly. It's like, if you know, you know. If you don't, well... I it wonder won't. why a pineapple is the thing. I mean, there's probably some great history behind it that I almost care about. Yeah, I don't because I didn't look it up. So, you yeah. know. Well, All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> yep. Congratulations on, well, uh, on Scott and Steve tying each other. Hey, how about that, huh? Well, we got a rockaholic that just sent us a message about a time that she went on a date with a guy that showed up on acid and started fighting with the breadsticks. <laughs> Steve's going to tell you all about it. Or actually, we'll tell you all about it. I, we'll put, you know, Steve, how about you and I? We'll both tell everybody about it. <laughs> That's right. We'll do that at 717.
on The Rock. DJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Ah. Hi, everybody. Hello. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We got a message on Facebook from Jessica, and she wrote, Hey, guys, Vicky, Sarah, I just went on a date. And it was so crazy that my coworkers and I thought it would make for a great topic on your show. So she says, I was on a date last weekend with a guy I met on Tinder and we chatted for a while before I agreed to date him. And I felt like he had similar tastes as me, so I was excited for the date. About 30 minutes into the date, things started getting really weird. I mean, super strange. It seemed like out of nowhere he started sweating a lot and staring off while I was talking. We had breadsticks at the table, and he took two of them out and started having the two breadsticks fight. <laughs> like as if they were action figures and they were wrestling. <laughs> Is he five? Yes. He's making what, sound you guys effects. don't do that at Olive Garden? I always oh, grab the breadsticks. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's Olive Garden Mania 4, brother. <laughs> no, I'm a lot more mature than that. I just make myself a walrus. Mm. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and of course, he was making the sound effects, too. <laughs> Kicking, punching, Ooh. all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that, dude, that's great stuff. <laughs> yeah, she was like, okay, uh, what, what are you doing there, breadstick fighting man? Clearly, he's trying to uh, uh, turn her on. I mean, isn't that what you do? That's what you do, yeah. Um, he said that he had effed up. He meant to microdose, but he thinks that he took too much acid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> you, you acid people are going to have to help me out here. Uh, you acid uh, people. Uh, you're going to have to. Well, <laughs> maybe I can answer some yeah. questions. Yeah, the acid have, people you, are in the room. It's red yeah. and I. Hi, you're, you're acid have, people. You're going to have to help me out here. Okay. I understand being nervous for a first date. Why would you take any form of acid? I, I mean, is there a form of, like, is microdosing able to, what is that? You can function microdosing. Yeah, yeah. People go to work. Micro, like that's been like a latest trend, yeah, uh, and not, not latest, but it's been going on for a little bit. Microdosing either acid or mushrooms, where it's just enough to... To, to kind of like put you in good spirits or yeah. help you focus. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you're doing okay. an itty, 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 itty bitty, bit amount, it theoretically should just kind of uplift your mood. Oh, okay. So maybe he felt like, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying what he did was right, but maybe his heart was in the right place. And he thought, this will put me in like a really good, like me at my best version of myself. And I'll be really into what she's saying. And I'll be there. And, but. Yeah, I mean, I've heard stories where people, if they don't, if, if they go a little bit too excessive, then all of a sudden you're just tripping. Yeah, well, he's like having, he was tripping, and you're having wrestling matches with the breadsticks. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she was like, "Wow, I could not believe it." So I got up, left him some cash for the food, and left. And she was well, like, it's nice of her to at least pay. Yeah, I mean, she did. You know, I, 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 I wonder if she's going to give him a second chance. Um, because <laughs> if it, I mean, he was honest enough to go, dude. I thought I could microdose, and and now that you've told me that some people do it in order to feel a little better, maybe take the edge off, focus better. That I mean, it seems like he was trying to do the right thing so he could be his best self. I, I really can't fault him for his intention. He just went over the top. Maybe yeah, he got a little too heavy handed in his yeah. dosage. Yeah. So she thought, hey, man, we thought you guys could ask the Rockaholics if they've ever gone on a date where they had to shut it down before the date was even over. That is, uh, you know what, because that, that's exactly what she had to do. And I wonder if this guy does get a second chance or not. I mean, it's... Uh it's the lukewarm topic of the day. Maybe next time they go to a festival together. Aww. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> Jessica messaged us about a time that she went on a first date that ended up because the guy showed up on acid. Based on this, we want to know what crazy thing happened on your date that made you shut it down before it was over. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. What crazy thing happened on your date that made you shut it down before it was over? We got your calls. We got your texts after Green Day. On the Rock. DJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. Jessica messaged us about a time that she went on a first date that ended because the guy showed up on acid. So based on this, what crazy thing happened on your date that made you shut it down before it was over? 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, text is coming in. One person says, I'm a single mom. My date referred to my girls as baggage. I stood up and walked out. Baggage? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, there's tactful, 
There's actually you don't even ever need to say anything. No, about that. you just choose maybe not to date that person again if like you didn't know they had kids and you're not into the idea of dating someone with kids. You have to save them baggage. time though. Saved everybody time. Yes. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing about being direct is you know exactly where everybody stands. And so, yeah, it wasn't tactful, but man, it was direct. And, you know, I, I appreciate directness, man. I know that, you know, people love tact, but I, I do love directness. It's like, okay, I get it. You're not into it. Peace out. Right. You're an idiot. I like to know that ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, baggage is the wrong word, but yes. if he doesn't want to have, you know, a relationship with somebody with kids, and and I, I don't know, do you think you someone should tell you that up front before you go on a date? Because I, I gather he didn't know. Otherwise, why would he be on the date and then tell her baggage? I think that's something you should tell somebody before you go on a date. I, th- I yes. have children. There's, a, there's been one instance where I dated someone who had kids, and they point blank. Yeah, they said before we went out, they hey, just to let you know, I have a kid. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, like it was like, it was... It was nice to be told ahead of time because, yeah, you're right. Like, it's kind of a weird thing to, like, go and have the dinner and do all that. And then, like, you know, maybe while dessert's coming home. By the way, I know we've had a great time. Also, I have six kid children. Yeah. See, I'm that's sex. why he yeah. looks like a bad guy for saying baggage. But I would argue, uh, you don't tell somebody up front before the date. You know, I think you're just as much of but a bad guy here. We're jumping to conclusions. Quite possibly she did. And then during the date, a couple drinks come in. And then all of a sudden he starts sharing his actual opinion. Oh, well, he's an idiot then. I mean, if he knows going you know I mean? into the day she's got kids, he's an idiot. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, I've got no sympathy for that guy. You you should not have gone on the date if you think kids are baggage. Or thinking he's being funny. Just like, yeah, like, you, oh, yeah, you're baggage. Ha, ha, ha. And she's I like, mean, at least he didn't call him F trophies. No, that's true. Or uh, Couch Goblins. I've yes. heard that one. <laughs> I think these are all great names for children, and I think they're perfect for icebreakers on a first date. Absolutely. Come Spe- on. Speaking of children, uh, at least soon to be children, someone said I was once... On a date with a girl, I ordered a beer, and she just said to the waitress, no alcohol for me, I'm pregnant. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, come on. Wow. How do you go on a date Mm. with somebody, and you're pregnant, and you don't let them know until the date? See... Maybe you just want to make sure you like the guy before you introduce the idea of him becoming the dad to your child. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm sorry. You know what? That's as bad as baggage, okay? I, that's rude as all hell. I love that's how he found out. No alcohol for me. Got a bun in the oven. Dude, that's, I mean, I would sit there and I'd be like, okay, I mean, this is pretty epic, but wow, you really thought you could pull this off. Okay. I mean, are you joking or are you serious? That would be my first question. Yeah, I, you're right, Steve. I would, I would have to be like, oh, that has to be a joke. There's mm-hmm. no way that you would like go, hey, here's your first date, and I'm pregnant with someone. Else. I mean, no, really. Um, maybe today they do that. I don't know. Um, ah. Detail of this man. text. Mine also involves breadsticks as well. I was on a date with a guy, and he pocketed five breadsticks, put them in his jacket coat pocket. I asked him, what, what is he doing? He says, I'm saving them for later. They give okay. you bags for that at the Olive Garden. I'm like, why would you need to pocket And you can things? ask for refills, right? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't the Olive Garden. Maybe it was a place where they're very they're strict about their breadsticks. Very yeah. stingy breadstick policy. Yeah. I've pocketed a pretzel before at the Diamond Club. <laughs> See, that's yeah, but different, Were though. you on a date? With you. Ah. That's true. Why yeah. do you think we never went on a second date? Think oh, about no. it. You never took me to the Diamond Club again. No, I, I never did. Him. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Just so uh, you <laughs> know what? You should Learn. Learn. I th- not one, but two. You know, one for each pocket. Yeah. yeah. Pocket and, uh, pencil, I was so embarrassed, I almost left the Diamond Club, but do you see all the awesome food there? I couldn't leave. And it was all, uh, f- well, free because we had the tickets. And I was like, I'm not leaving here without these pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> the Diamond Club is, here's the sad thing about the Diamond Club, is it also offers you ability to have food delivered to your seat. But I was so full from all of the pregame amazing buffet food <laughs> they had in the Diamond Club that I'm like, oh man, I really ruined it because I can't eat another thing. I, they will deliver anything to your seat. Oh, so good. So good. At some time <laughs> in your life, if you're a baseball fan, mm-hmm. save up. Save up to go to the Diamond Club one time in your life or make that a special gift for the baseball fan in your life. It is a great experience. It really, really is. I just texted. I showed up to a date and the girl brought her ex-boyfriend for security. I walked away. Good call. Wait, what? Make sure, you know, the guy that you're dating, you're dating my ex. I want to make sure you're a good guy. What the hell is wrong know, man. with people? People are out there, man. Yeah, I, wow, okay. And I thought, you know, I was going to ask Vicky, because Vicky's weird, and, and a lot of her boyfriends are weird, so I thought she They've all stuff. been very normal. Yeah. 
And calling them a boyfriend is a is a stretch. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess your bang buddies are are very interesting. I'll I'll say that this one like really bummed me out because I'm I'm certain everyone has kind of experienced something like this where you're really really drunk. Like when I used to work at a restaurant, we would go out afterwards out on the town, and we'd proceed to get hammered. And I met a group of guys. Some from like they were all from London. And I had, like, the best conversation with one of them. It was like, we were connecting. We understood each other. We were on the same wavelength. I'm like, dude, we need to hang out again. And we hang out, like, the next morning or a morning, like, two days after, and completely sober. And we just both looked at each other. We both talked for a minute. We're like, yeah, no. Ah! No, absolutely. God, that sucks, man. When you like no when you have chemistry, the no no attraction. Oh, drunken connection is the best, but then it sucks when it doesn't carry over. No, it did not, and it, that, oh. that's like the worst feeling. Have you had thought about maybe day drinking then? I mean, you know. I mean, yeah, but I need to be in an area where other people are day drinking too. Otherwise, I'm just the hammered weird girl. That really is the story, Vicky. I think you just need to be drunk all the time and people will like yeah. you. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's encourage alcoholism. <laughs> I feel She's like right? for Vicky, though, it really could work. Yeah. Well, speaking of day drinking, I see your daughter's in the room. BJ. <laughs> Wow. Never a stranger to a box wine at three in the no. afternoon, right, Sarah? No, right, not at all, Vicky. If you need a buddy, I'm here for you. Hey, I got dear. the day drinking, night drinking, all yeah, all drinking uh, down. That's Morning a delightful, drinking. wonderful. Yeah. Well, be Five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Always. That was a joke, Sarah. Don't make oh. it real. Okay. Uh. Uh, I went on a date with a guy. We met at a bar, and he reeked of weed, which is fine. You know, do your thing, whatnot. He ordered a beer. He drank about. Not even half and was like immediately completely crossfaded. So I don't know if he had done something else before meeting up. And I was like, well, this should be interesting. Like could barely kind of keep his eyes open. Couldn't keep a conversation. He suggested we order shots. And nice. I was like, no, I don't I don't really think you need a shot, which, you know, for me to turn down a shot is a, is a big thing. And he immediately was like, wow. You're boring. Uh, ex- excuse me. Ex- That's cool. Me. That was where I was like, oh, we are done with this date. You do. You can call me all the things except boring, sir. <laughs> I got the check. I was like, I'm driving you home because I don't trust you driving anywhere. And I pull up to his house and he's like, I think the motion of the car probably got to him. He was like, I think I'm going to hurl and i was like oh you better do it outside open the door he opened the door proceeded to throw up and of course part of it got on my car of course it did. <laughs> and he turned to me and was like we should do this again sometime and i was like <laughs> no we yeah. shouldn't and how crazy now you're marrying that man next yeah, yeah. 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 turned it around he really turned it around, around. <laughs> Trust me, we, I have my own stories about that man. But oh, I'm sure. If we, I'm right, sure yeah, he nice. can call him with some stories too. But tell us your story about J. Rubs. No, we don't okay, want those stories. I want this marriage to happen. Oh my God. No bad like, stories about J. Rubs. I want the, the marriage one that to happen. Got kicked out of the bar and then peed himself. No, like that, that story. Yeah. Yeah. Dating. So okay, dating. Is that, is that why I said, like, "What are you trying to do? Why are you telling these stories?" I know he still has time to back out of this, doesn't he? Yes, he out does. Of Yes, he does, and I'll be stuck with it. I mean, you'll be, you're a wonderful child. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that date did not go. J Rubs, it, it's fine. You you do what you want. I'll forgive you for that, especially since you're marrying me now. But that other guy, ne- never again. He apologized in the morning. He texted me, and I was like, no, we're never. So, really, all the best of luck in your future endeavors. <laughs> yeah, because he asked, oh, can we go out again? Can I make it up to you? No. No, sir. So let's be clear. So peeing yourself, throwing up all over your car, not really the problem. Calling you boring was the problem. That <laughs> yeah, was, totally. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Well, well compared to what he things. does, I mean, have you ever peed yourself on a date? No, you're probably a boring person then. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's a good point. <laughs> Thank you. See, at least J. Rose is interesting. <laughs> these are true facts. I mean, maybe you are boring after all. I mean, these guys are living it. Okay, what are you doing? I, uh, yeah, what a mess. I'm interested uh, I'm interested in our boy Danny because, as you know, Danny is uh, just an amazing dater. Uh, you know sure. I try. The yeah, amazing yeah. dater. The amazing yeah, dater. The amazing dater. On CBS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering, Danny, were you, the, were, were you the reason the date got shut down or did somebody actually have to shut the date down? You had to shut the date down on them. Oh, me, of course. Yeah. Oh, there we are. That's what I would have yeah. guessed. I would have bet that. In all, my high, guessed it. in all my high school awkwardness, I went on a date with a girl who I really liked. Like, I am super nervous to go hang out with her. Of course, me so we went to the skate park because she that was a place to go hang out and I met her there. Was and her name Avril? 
Her name was Avril. Mm-hmm. I was Skater Boy. She was Skater Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Steve. You're I, welcome. <laughs> I bought a bottle of Coke from uh, the little, like, concession stand. Oh, it's going to be that kind of party. And so, yes. <laughs> bottle. Jeez. I didn't know you could get a bottle of that kind of party. You can. It's crazy. I mean, I get, oh, Danny yeah. with the bottle service. Damn. Look at you, Danny. <laughs> Danny with the new vans and the bottle service of Coke. I was sitting, we sat down at a table and I was talking to her, but I, of course, couldn't stop fidgeting. So, of course, I'm just tapping the, the uh, Coke bottle on the table. As I'm talking, the thing explodes everywhere. Awesome. It, like, literally explodes. It looked like I put a Mentos into it, and it just exploded everywhere. She was wearing a white shirt. The date was oh, over. Oh, yeah. Oh, she didn't want a wet t-shirt she concert. She didn't want a wet contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Danny's just like, I just want to see if I'm interested in you naked. This was the best way to yeah, find out. Yeah, that was the easiest way. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, off topic. I mean, well, that's semi-off topic. Did you guys hear about the the can trick that you can keep it from exploding if it gets all like shaken up and uh, for carbonation? Is it a couple taps on the top? No, no, I was, I was, I, that's I, the only I, one I know. Yeah, that's the one I knew. I learned this on Better Call Saul this week. You make your friend open that one instead of you. Yeah, that's dude. What I, do. I mean, this. I mean, I can't believe. So none of you know this, and I was today years old when I learned it, and I tried it. So like, it 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 works. I love that you tested this out. I, I tested know. it out, yeah. Because I was so happy to show my... But the reason, but here's why. Every time my wife and I buy a Trader Joe's uh, seltzer water that she loves, I can't, for some reason, I don't know what I do, somehow I always shake it by the time I get it from wherever it is to actually having to pour it for her, and it blows up everywhere. So this trick works on cans, don't know if it works on bottles, but you just you just turn it. You just put it on a flat surface and then just start turning it. Like anyway, a screw? Yeah, just screw it. Yeah, and just keep turning it and turning it and turning it. And I learned that on Better Call Saul, and it works. Why? I don't know. <laughs> it, it was an epi- One of his interns, you know, one of the lawyer's interns dropped a whole bunch of sodas, and then he was reloading the refrigerator, and the guy goes, hey, uh, dude, you know what happens when you shake up cans of soda? And he's like, oh, my gosh, I forgot. He goes, don't worry about it. I learned a trick. And and uh, and he shows the trick, and I'm like, what? That's this so, can't work. Dude, that's so weird. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anytime you, so the thing was, one of the characters on the show, whenever he got a can of soda, before he would open it, he would just continue to turn it around, and that's where this dude was talking about. I learned this from that guy because he was always prepared. He would never open a soda until he gave it a couple of spins, just in case it had had been, you know, shaken up. Not saying I don't believe you, but what if BJ was trolling us all and we all go home and try this, <laughs> and we're all just, and then on the group thread, it's all of us just flipping him off. Yeah. <laughs> I. You know what? That'd if I was epic. a prankster, you're right. This would be great. Now I. Listen, if you do it wrong, I can't help. I'm, all I know is I tried it, and it worked for me. Well, what, so, how could you do it wrong? Can, you, is doing, can you do it on a table, or does it have to just be on like the... It's f- got to be on a flat surface. That's all so I... So table's and, flat, yeah, okay. And I would, give it, I would give it at least 10 turns. Yeah, I just watched I a video, and I mean, they edited it, so we'll have to see, but they just did it literally on the ground, like uh, uh, just kind of dug a little spot in some gravel and just spun it around a couple times, popped it open, no fizz, nothing. Yeah, mm. flat surface should do the trick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, nobody knew how, about, how we didn't know about this. Where were you when I was fifteen, BJ? I know. Right. Right. Gone the best day of my life. I haven't tried it with a two liter bottle, oh, so yeah, that might be enough. the next experiment to see if it works with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. A little pro tip for you today. Glad nice. I could help out. Yeah. Wow. So today is na- uh, is National Road Trip Day. So a website put together a list of the best road trip songs, and what topped the list? Oh, you know I'm going to tell you. I'll do that at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another listener question. How do I rebuild my credit after filing bankruptcy? Uh, you rebuild it, you know, one creditor at a time by making your payments on time to, on your on your rent or your mortgage, by continuing to make car payments at, on a car that you keep during your case. Um, you can also, as I said, you can almost always get a credit card almost immediately after filing bankruptcy. Sometimes it's a secured card and it'll almost always have a really high interest rate on it, but you can get a small balance credit card and, you know, charge a tank of gas or, or a dinner once a month on that and make the payment, pay it off every month. Month, and that'll help you build a credit history one creditor at a time and will help you rebuild your credit over time. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.